Okay, so today we're going to figure out how to run this um, seafloor spreading lab. Um, so you've got a new sensor this time. It is a magnetic field sensor. Um, you'll notice that it's bent towards this little white mark right here. Um, that's the first thing to make sure um, that we're looking at. Um, you may or may not have this end cap. That's okay. That's not going to impact. The other thing you want to make sure is that um, our sensor is set uh, to the, correct, to the correct one. We're going to set it on the actual low setting, so this slider should be um, down towards the 6.4. Um, then we need to change our, um, before we've always done kind of time-based, but this time what we're going to change this one to is we're going uh, to change this uh, mode to, instead of time-based, we're going to change it to events with entry. Um, we're going to change the name of this first event uh, to distance. Sorry, I'm working upside down here. Um, and make sure I click done. And then the units we'll be collecting in is in centimeters. I think that's all spelled correctly. Distance, centimeters, and then I'm going to click OK. Um, and so uh, then um, the thing about magnetism is magnetism and electricity are like best friends. And so I really have nothing um, that I'm measuring right now, but you'll notice I'm picking up readings of magnetism because there's electricity everywhere. So like my computer over here can pick up some electricity, like everything, everything is generating an electric field. So we have to tell the sensor that we just want to measure the electricity in our model, not necessarily on everything around us. So we're gonna zoom out our camera here. And let's say I wanted to take data right here. So I'm gonna move my equipment so that um, I'm kind of, in the spot that I want to be in. And I'm going to take that empty bin that I had for the, uh, for the, all the gear, all the toys in the toy box, and I'm just going to set my sensor on the edge of that bin. Notice I'm not down in the bin, um, I'm just kind of setting, um, setting kind of on that edge there. Um, so I've got the whole thing kind of supported by uh, that that sensor is supported by the edge. And um, what then I will do is on my lab quest, um, and now, uh, so you're gonna keep this lab quest wherever. I'm setting it up here so you guys can see what I'm doing in the camera. Um, but um, for your guys' sakes and purposes, you would keep this lab quest kind of out of the way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click that sensors area, and you'll see this button that says zero. I'm going to go ahead and click zero and it'll take and it's going to ignore all the electricity that's in the room and that's really what I want to do. So now um, my, I'm going to stay here, I'm the materials manager, I'm going to stay here and I'm going to move that empty bin out of the way and what we're going to do at that point is move in the actual model bin um, because this is where we're going to take data. And so. I'm now going to hold my sensor here on the edge of my model. You'll notice it's right up against the edge of the bin. Um, and I've got to measure every centimeter. Um, how I measure is up to me as the scientist. I just have to make sure I'm consistent. So if I kind of come in here, the way I would personally do it is I would call that two centimeters because I'm right at the edge there of the two centimeter mark. Okay, now if I, so I'm just, that's my whole job. I just have to hold still. Um, and so what you can see here is that I've got the sensor kind of braced on the edge um, as well as kind of leaned up against the ruler. Alternatively, I could be going in from this direction and I could hold it so that it was up against the edge and kind of leaning on the ruler too. Um, however, however works best for you. And then again, this still looks like two to me, so I would be at two centimeters. Um, if I use this method, oops, I'm going the wrong way. If I use this method, I want to make sure that that um, sensor is right up against the ruler um, because our the part of the model that we're going to be measuring is going to be right underneath that edge of that ruler right there. Um, so I'm going to hold my sensor. Now, if I am the data manager at this point, um, I've got something that looks like this on the screen. Oops, sorry. Um, I've got something that looks like this on the screen. Come on, come with me. And um, you'll notice it just looks like a bunch of numbers. It doesn't really, um, it doesn't look like a whole lot going on. 
I do need to click play down here in the corner. And then what happens is I get this little button that says keep. And so what I'm looking at is that little dot and I'm looking at these numbers over here. They're never gonna stop changing. Um, but what I really want to have happen is, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to make sure that, um, come on, come with me, Mr. Camera Guy. Um, what I want to make sure is that um, I use this keep button down here in the corner. I want to make sure that that, uh, that that keep button is what is used when I go to collect data. So, bring this down a little closer. There we go. Um, so here's kind of what I'm seeing on my screen. And now I have a stop button and a keep button. And I'm staying away from that stop button. I'm going to push that keep button. And what that does is it takes a little picture of our data. Um, as it takes the little picture of the data, now I have to ask my materials manager where are we at. And so my materials manager is going to say, we're at two centimeters. So I'm going to type in two and click OK. And then I tell them, OK, I'm done. And they're going to move that sensor over to the third centimeter. And you notice I have now have another dot. And those numbers are still moving. And I just kind of wait for them to get to a happy place. They'll go for a crazy bounce for a little bit. And then they'll go to a happy bounce. Looks like our happy bounce is sitting at about 4.4. Four. So I'm going to go ahead and click Keep. Notice that took me maybe you know, 15, 20 seconds at most. I put in the number three because we're at three and I go to OK and so on. So now I've got another dot. Now my dot kind of disappeared. Um, the graph is going to auto scale as we go so I'm not going to worry about the fact that I can't see my dot. But now I'm going to keep going and I see that I'm at about 1.05. I'm going to go ahead and click keep and now I'm at centimeter four and so now there's my other dot and so now I'm going to move to centimeter five on my model as my um, partner keeps collecting data and I should start to see a pattern start to develop and I'm going to do that for every centimeter all the way across. When I'm done with my data collection then I can click stop and when I'm done with my data collection I need to make sure that I'm collected, connected to the Wi-Fi so I'm going to go ahead and click Wi-Fi here. You'll notice it says no network, no connection. If that pops up for you click that gear right there and what we're going to do is we're going to create a network. You're going to give it a school appropriate name. Um, so I'm just going to call mine Hey for right now. And I'm going to click Create. And what that will then do is give me an IP address. I can find that IP address here or I can find that IP address here in the corner. And it should be, I think it's the same for everyone. I think it's going to be 192.168.2331 but I need to make sure I'm connected to this Wi-Fi on my computer. My computer is going to look like it's not going to connect. It's going to keep that little running, uh, running thing, but it will connect. Um, so just ignore the fact that it looks like it's not connected. Type that into a browser anyway. As soon as you type that IP address in, boom, it'll snap that data over to your computer. And you need to save it as a JPEG. So you need to save it as an image and then print it as big as you can. So I want it to take up the whole paper. Um, don't put it like, you know, half sheet or whatever. It'll make your life a lot easier when you go to print it. If you print it full page and everybody needs their own copy. Uh, preferably you have a, both a digital copy as well as a paper copy when you come to class uh, for your next small group. So that that way the data analysis will go so much easier for you. And the digital copy is for if you make a mistake, you've got a backup. All right, Warriors.